Hello everyone, good evening, how are you all? So yes, we are here with the SSC previous year questions and today we are going to discuss the mixed questions from SSC CGL examinations. And in the ending, we will be covering those questions as well, which has the most probability of coming in the examination. Now, what are those questions? Let's have a look at the first question of the day. The first question is, the study of extinct animals is called what? Now, let's see who will answer this. Study of extinct animals. Who can give this answer? I am waiting for the answer from everyone. And everyone who is there in the session, please start giving answers. So that we can start interacting and we will be doing 360 degree analysis over here. Yes. Let's start with the options as usual. If I will go with this part, that is herpetology. So here we will talk about the reptiles and all. That is study of them. Now if I will go with this ornithology. This is what? It is actually related to what? It is actually related to the birds. In this similar manner, if I will go with this geology part, this means we are talking about what? Earth. Now, I don't know how many of you remember, there was a thing that we discussed. And what was that? There was a word that was known as logi. Remember? And this logi word was actually derived from logos word, which actually means study. So, study of anything. For example, if I talk about biology, so what is biology? Logy actually means study. Where? Bio is standing for life. So life study is biology. In the similar manner, if I break it into two parts, one is zoology. Now in zoo, what you are going to see? Obviously the animals. So what is that? Study, which is related to the animals. That is zoology. Similarly, for the study related to the plants, that is botany. Related to the reptiles, then we have herpetology. Related to the birds, we have ornithology. But the question was what? Question was asked regarding extinct animal study. So for this, you are going to have your option number fourth, that is D, that is your palynothology. Now, if I talk about this part again, just try to break it into this part, that is logy, which would be study. And this is going to tell you about the extinct animals. So obviously, the correct answer is going to be option number four, that is option D. Okay, let's move forward with the next question now. We have next question. Which phenomena do bats or dolphins use to find prey, predators or obstacles? Now, this question is from CGL 2011. If I talk about this question, there's a logic where we talk about echo. What is this echo? Here, we know that there's a reflection of sound. What is it? Here, we find that there is a reflection of sound. Now, if I talk about bats or dolphins, when they are moving in the night time, specifically in the night time, where instead of using their eyes, what they are doing? They are just throwing these rays or we will talk about waves. And when they, these particular waves, when they strike any of the obstacles, they come back and accordingly they can analyze that obstacle is present or is it free path or is it easy path to go. So whatever is it for uh, getting, in, uh, in, instead of just going towards the obstacle, they can just turn around. How? Using this technology that is echo. So here the correct answer is going to be option number D that is echolation. And one more thing is there. If I will talk about this echo part, please remember, there's a minimum distance. There's a minimum distance for this echo and that minimum distance is what? That is 17 meters. This is asked in the examination. So do not forget. What is that? That minimum distance is 17 meter. But same logic, it is almost same. There's one more thing that is known as reverberation. Reverberation. Now, what is this reverberation? See, in this echo, what was happening? Whatever you were saying, that particular noise was coming back, right? But if I will talk about this reverberation, what is happening in this reverberation? If I will talk about this reverberation in this, whatever sound is there, its intensity is uh, keeping on degrading. That is, the sound which was there in the starting, it actually damped. Now, how this particular part is going? For example, if I'll take anyone's name, for example, I have, if I'll shout, for example, it's Rahul. So, if I'll shout, Rahul, 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 that means what? Here, if I'll check the intensity, that intensity is de degrading, right? But voice is still coming. This particular part is reverberation and where it is going to happen? This will actually happen in a room or you can talk about a hall. So, there's a difference between both the things, that is reverberation and echo. We must remember all these facts. So, yes, now moving forward to the next question. Next, we have Darwin 
Finch is refers to a group of dash. Now this is from CGL 2011 and also 2004. Just have a look. This is a very important question. Why? Because not only this is asked in CGL, obviously repeated question in CGL, but yes, it plays a significant role in other examinations as well. This has been asked in various other examinations, which includes even your NTPC part. So yes, if I talk about this Darwin Finches, actually at that time, what was happening, there was an experiment which was done on around 15 species of the birds, right? And from there, birds have actually derived its name. So yes, Darwin Finches refers to a group of birds. So what was that? Here, the experiments was actually conducted on these birds. So from there, it has derived the word that is Darwin Finches. So Darwin Finches refers to a group of words where an experiment was conducted on an island and this from there, the word has come that is Darwin Finches. So here, birds is the correct answer. Next we have, which of the following is the largest living bird? Now this is from SSCSO 2005 and CGL 99. Quite older, but yes, an important one. What would be the correct answer for this? Which of the following is the largest living bird? If I'll talk about this bird, please remember. Here, the correct answer is going to be what? I'll give you a hint. And that hint is, if I will talk about this largest living bird, just think about a scenario where I'll talk about the largest cell. If I'll talk about largest cell, which is the largest cell? We know that largest cell is actually ostrich egg, right? So what is that? Ostrich egg. Now, when we are talking about ostrich egg, we understand about its largest nature. Yeah, Kiran, absolutely correct. But if I talk about the cell which is largest in a human body, so largest cell in the human body would be what? That would be ovum. So, yes, these two things are very important. Here, the correct answer is going to be option number B, that is ostrich. Next, we have Code is a variety of what? Now, this is from CPO 2011, but it is important. If I will talk about vitamins, when we will talk about vitamins, then we have certain vitamins, right? We can talk about A, then we have vitamin D. There are several vitamins. Now, I want to get this vitamin. So, what I'll do? I will use the liver of one of the fish and it is very important. Now, this code which you are seeing here, it is actually a fish from where we get several vitamins. Please do not forget, what is it? It is actually a fish and the liver of this fish is actually of great importance where we get several vitamins. So yes, what would be the correct answer Kiran here? Here, the correct answer is going to be fish. So code is actually a variety of fish and this question is also important from the nutrients part where it includes many vitamins as well. Okay, let's move forward with the next question now. Next we have which of the following is an egg laying mammal? Now you must be wondering sir what? You are saying about mammal and you are saying that sir they will be laying egg. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. So let's see what would be the correct answer. And yes, this is from CPU also and CGL also. In both the examinations this question is asked. And we know that mammals are the ones who are directly giving birth to their younger ones. That is there is no such egg laying process. But still there is an exception. And that is here within these options. So, Kiran is saying, sir, it would be whale. No, Kiran. Here, the correct answer is going to be spiny ant eater. Now, what is this? Here, I'll write its name also. Please do not forget, it is echidna. It is echidna. So, in the, exam, in the examination, this name may also be asked. Please do not forget. Yes, whenever we talk about mammals, Mammals directly give their uh, give birth to their younger ones. There, there is no such egg laying process, but there is an exception where we are talking about the spiny anteater where you can talk about echidna, right? So, yes, these are one and the same thing. Do not forget, very, very important question. I'll mark it here. It's an important one. Okay. So, I guess you got this point. Let's move forward to the next question now. Next, we have who was the pioneer of Chipku movement in 1973? Now, this is from ecology part where we discuss about ecosystem and all. But yes, this is very important question. Why? I have mentioned here, CGL 2017. But if you will go for the PET examinations, then there this question is asked. So yes, this was the movement when it was taking place, it was against deforestation. That is, uh, there were a lot of trees that were being cut. So 
there was a person who was actually standing against it and then a several group came what was that this name chipku movement itself tells about its category what was happening there whenever there was a, there was a person who used to come for cutting this tree they used to stand around the tree just holding that tree and they used to say you can cut me first then this tree will be cut and yes this particular chipku movement was started by sundar sundar lal that is sundar lal bahuguna so option number c that is sundar lal would be the correct answer next next we have red data book contains the data of which of the following now this is from ssc cgl 2017 i'll be waiting for the answer kiran can you answer this part kiran and all the other candidates who are there in the session please start answering red data book it is related to what waiting for the answer please red data book okay so if i talk about this red data book it is a book where we talk about the extinct species now what are these extinct extinct species if i talk about this extinct species please remember they are those particular animals or they are those particular organism which were actually living on the earth but now right now they are not present so yes all the extinct species are actually there in the red data book and here this particular book that is red data book from the name itself it is clear we are talking about those particular species which are on the verge of extinction so we'll talk about this question i guess now you got this point please do not go with wrong with this answer because this one is very very important for the examination right so what i am saying if i talk about this red data book red data book is the book where we talk about all those species which are actually on the verge of extinction so what would be the correct answer here sorry here the correct answer would be on the verge of extinction that is all endangered species which can die or which are about to die where i can talk about that particular uh bird in hindi we call that goraiya bird right it is about to extinct so yes all those species which are about to extinct here they will come in the red data book next we have we have example official application here which is one stop solution for all the government job aspirants we have live paid courses with the test series we have free subject wise topic wise quiz with the report card we have job alert admit card examination date we have all exams previous year pdf with the solution we have free all india scholarship test with the report card then we have topic wise free live classes we have free full length and sectional test with the report card we have free examination wise pdf practice at pdf then the most important thing current affair that to daily weekly monthly all these things at a single platform just go to the play store type exam pro over there click on the install button click on the open part just do the registration and start using it okay so we have next question which among the following is the major cause of acid rain now again this is question which was asked in cgl and not only cgl i'll write it for you it is from the cpo part also it is from the chsl part also in almost all the examinations this is being asked regularly so yes if i'll talk about the acid rain what is it from name acid rain it is clear that we are talking about a rain in which acid con a content will be there and we are aware of that there is a gas that is so2 from factories we get it and because of this so2 what is generated h2so4 what is that that is a sulfuric acid but apart from this gas one more gas is there and yes we have discussed about those nitrous oxides remember nitrogen oxides so if i'll talk about other gases here you can talk about nox where if i'll talk about this no2 it is going to become nitrogen dioxide so is there any option regarding this yes we have option that is option number c and this gas will create what this gas is actually going to create hno3 that is your nitric acid so nitric acid sulfuric acid are the ones which actually come down towards the earth and they are the cause of marble cancer as well okay so we have next question now which of the following is an artificial ecosystem now this is from cpu examination 2017 what do you think what is the correct answer over here artificial ecosystem waiting for the answer please answer which one is the artificial ecosystem what do you think see from the name itself it is clear we are talking about artificial that means we are talking about man made now here 
Yeah, that's true. Kiran, absolutely correct. If I talk about these options, here, aquarium is the one which is the artificial ecosystem. It is actually man-made where we have created that ecosystem in which what is happening? In this particular ecosystem, we know that we have used those fishes, we have created all those particular things and it is like a world for that fish, right? So it is made by us. So this is aquarium which is artificial ecosystem. Next we have spraying of DDT, dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane. DDT on the crops causes the pollution of what? Is it air and soil? Is it crops and air? Is it soil and water? Or is it air and water? What do you think? What will be the correct answer over here? Yes, answer please. My question is, I'm talking about DDT, dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane. If I'm using it on the crops, what will happen? What kind of pollution it is going to create? Is it air and soil? Is it crops and air? Is it soil and water? Is it air and water? So it's very obvious. If I talk about options, when I'm spraying DDT, so obviously one of the part that is soil would be the correct answer. But another thing is, do you think air would be there? That is, obviously air is present, but there would be an issue with the air? No. So this option is eradicated. Talking about crops, if I will use GDT, if there would be issue in the crops, why would I use? So there would be no such pollution to the crops. So obviously, this is wrong. Now, if I talk about this part, that is soil. So soil was correct, no doubt. But yes, apart from that, water also. Because that particular DDT would be uh, mixed with the water as well. And here, water pollution will be created. So water pollution and soil pollution, both of them would, would be the correct one. So yes, spraying of DDT, its full form is dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane. Here, option number C, that is soil and water is going to be the correct answer. Next. Next, we have what, which of the following three R's are regarded as environmental friendly? Answer please. Just think about three R's. What are they? You might have seen that sign. It is written in such a manner. R, R, R. So we'll talk about this logo. What do you think? This represents what? And obviously it is actually there. Why? So that we can prevent those particular pollution part, whether it is air pollution, whether it is soil pollution. So these three R's are standing for what? Which of the following three R's are regarded as eco-friendly, environmental friendly? Is it reduce, rebuild, restrict? Is it random reduce, recall? Is it read, register, recall? Or is it reduce, reuse and recycle? So what do you think? What is the correct answer over here? Reduce, reuse and recycle. Yes, Kiran. Absolutely correct. If I will talk about this part here, reduce, reuse and recycle. This is going to be the correct answer. Okay. Moving forward to the next question. Chocolates can be bad for health because of high content of what? Chocolate can be bad for health because of high content of what? What do you think? Is it cobalt, nickel, zinc or lead? What is the correct answer for this? Waiting for the answer. Answer please. Yes, I was talking about this question. Here, if I talk about these chocolates, please remember, chocolates are actually very, very dangerous for our body. Why? See, obviously, there's a good reason as well. Now, what is the good reason for this chocolate? Good reason is, don't know. Kiran is saying, don't know, but sir, I eat it, huh? Okay, so if I talk about these chocolates, these chocolates are obviously used, using, oh, sorry, they are actually used in order to make a memory sharp. Some of them say, I'm not saying, I've actually read that articles in the newspapers and all. They're actually keeping a memory sharp. But, but the important thing is that if I talk about its health uh, defects or th those particular bad health habits. So here I'll talk about that it is because of the presence of nickel that these chocolates can be bad for the health. But the most important thing is when I'm talking about these things, cobalt, nickel, zinc, lead, even those iron, what is it? So when we talk about nutrients, when we talk about nutrients, nutrients are of two different types. One is macronutrient, another one is micronutrient. In the macronutrient, we have carbohydrate. In the macronutrient, we have carbohydrate. Apart from carbohydrate, we have proteins. Apart from proteins, we have fats. 
if i'll talk about micronutrients we have vitamins here apart from vitamins we have all those things that is calcium then zinc all those important things but this nickel is not good for our health and this nickel is present in the chocolate and because of this chocolate is actually bad for our health okay moving forward with the next question arrangement of leaves in a plant is called what what is the arrangement of leaves in a plant known as is it phyllotaxy is it phototaxy is it a phytotaxy or is it linear taxi what do you think what will be the correct answer and everyone who's there in the session please start giving answers yes arrangement of the leaves for example if i'm talking about a plant so these arrangement of the leaves will be known as what so we have phyllotaxy phototaxy phytotaxy or linear taxi what do you think what is going to be the correct answer over here so kiran your answer is pending and all the other candidates kindly 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 give you attendance so that i can start interaction with you as well yeah kiran what do you think what is the correct answer over here arrangement of leaves very basic question but it is asked again and again arrangement of leaves in a plant when we will study of plant physiology in that plant physiology this is the first thing where that we discuss yes if i talk about this plant physiology part here the arrangement of leaves is actually known as phyllotaxy what is that here option number a that is phyllotaxy is going to be the correct answer next muscle fatigue occurs due to the accumulation of what now this is the question from cpo 2017 what do you think what is the correct answer over here muscle fatigue occurs due to the accumulation of what is it adp is it atp is it lactic acid or is it carbonic acid what is the correct answer for this muscle fatigue and everyone who doesn't know about this fatigue i'll tell you we are talking about tiredness and it happens if i have if i have worked for a whole day and yeah totally correct and end, end of the day i am feeling tired this is because of what this is actually because here lactic acid gets accumulated and the people who are not aware of this part that is atp and adp these are the energy molecules which are present in our body what is its full form so atp stands for adenosine triphosphate adenosine tri phosphate but if i talk about this adp it is adenosine adenosine di phosphate okay let's move forward to the next question now so here we have next question before moving next question we have exam for official application which is one stop solution for all the government job aspirants what all things we have we have live paid course with the test series we have free subject wise and topic wise quiz with the report card we have job alert admit card and examination date all examination previous year pdf with the solution we have free all india scholarship test with the report card then we have topic wise free live classes free full length and sectional test with the report card free exam wise pdf and practice set pdfs then we have daily weekly and monthly current affair and yes we have unlimited subject wise and subject wise practice questions what do you have to do just go to the play store type example over there click on the install button click on the open part just do the registration and start using it okay so we have next question here buccal cavity is a component of which of the following system so we have four options here what do you think what will be the correct answer here yes answer please buccal cavity is a component of which of the following organ systems now this is from cpo 2017 buccal cavity so kiran can you answer this part yes answer please buccal cavity is the component of which of the following organ system now if you are not aware of this buccal cavity let me tell you we are talking about mouth over here which is including several parts where we can talk about teeth we can talk about our tongue we can talk about the salivary gland right and if in detail we'll go so please remember if i'll talk about this tongue also so tongue has several parts where one of the part is telling this this is bitter in taste one of the part is telling this is a uh, sour in taste one of the part is telling it is sweet in taste so these all things that is this part of tongue then your teeth where we have the covering of enamel and the salivary gland from where saliva is generated all these things are there in the buccal cavity now obviously if i talk about all these things so this these things are present here these things are present in the digestive system so digestive system is going to be the correct answer over here 
And yes, let's have a look at the next question. Next we have, amino acids are required for the synthesis of what? Is it alkaloids, is it lipids, is it proteins or is it carbohydrates? What is the correct answer? Amino acids are required for the synthesis of dash. So what is going to be the correct answer over here? Amino acids. Here, we have just discussed when we were talking about nutrients, if I talk about this proteins and carbohydrates, these are macronutrients, right? And in these macronutrients also, if I talk about this carbohydrate, carbohydrate is made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. One of the favorite question of CGL part is, when I talk about this protein, we have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, apart from that we have what? We have nitrogen as well. So yes, nitrogen is also present here. But amino acids are actually required for its synthesis. That is, who synthesis? We are talking about the synthesis of proteins. So for the synthesis of the proteins, we require amino acids. Okay. So everyone who is there in this session, please like it and start commenting so that I can have interaction with you as well. Okay. Next we have, which of the following is a vitamin? So we have keratin here, we have riboflavin here, we have insulin and adrenaline. So if I'll go with these options, first of all, if I'll talk about this adrenaline. This is what? This is 3F hormone, where F stands for fear, second F is for fight, and third F is for flight. If I talk about insulin, insulin level maintenance is very important. Why? In order to prevent from diabetes mellitus. So this insulin level is very, very important. When they are actually maintained, we are safe and sound, but if insulin level is low, and glucose level has increased. So here we can suffer from diabetes mellitus. But here the correct answer is going to be riboflavin, which is in the B series. What is it? It is B2. So B2 is actually a vitamin. And yes, what is the correct answer here? So if I talk about a vitamin, so it is a riboflavin. That is option number B will be the correct answer. Next, deficiency of iodine will lead to what? So we have hyperthyroidism, we have goiter, we have midgut, and we, fourth option is diabetes. So, let's see who can answer this part. And everyone who is there in the session, can you answer this part? Yes, waiting for the answer, please. When I talk about diabetes, so, how this diabetes gets into a, uh, into a existence? If I talk about diabetes, please remember what is happening here. Yeah, so Kiran is absolutely correct here. Awesome, Kiran. So, what I was saying, if I talk about this diabetes, this actually occurs when there's a part that is known as isolate of Langerhans in pancreas. From here, we have alpha, beta and delta cells. From this beta cell, we have insulin, right? And if insulin level goes down and glucose level goes up, in this condition, what we will say? We will say that a person is suffering from diabetes mellitus. So, Kiran, great. You are absolutely correct. If I talk about the deficiency of iodine, it will lead to goiter. And this takes place where? This actually takes place in the thyroid gland. Okay, next. Which of the following is not a vestigial organ in the human body? Is it thymus gland, wisdom teeth, pharynx or thyroid gland? What is the correct answer here? What do you think? What would be the correct answer here? Kiran, here the question is, which of the following is not a vestigial organ? So we have four options here. First of all, we must be aware of, what is this vestigial organ? Are you aware of this part? If not, please let me know. I'll explain it. See, Karen, what happens? If I talk about a body part, so there are some of the body parts which are actually not useful now. For example, if I talk about our category, we belong to apes. Once upon a time, we were belonging to apes. Right now, obviously, when we were apes, there must be tail. But right now, there is no such tail because it is of no use, right? In the similar manner, if I talk about earthworms. Earthworms do not have eye. Why? Because earthworms are living where? Earthworms are living within the soil. So, within the soil, do you think they must be requiring eye? No, they don't require eye. And hence, we can say that because of this reason, because they don't require any eye, they are not having, they are not having eye. In the similar manner, if I talk about our body, in our body also, there are some of the organs which are of no use. For example, if I talk about thymus gland, this gland, I will tell you about its condition. This is a gland which takes its maximum shape, it takes its maximum shape till 13 years. 
बट आफ्टर थर्टीन ईयर्स इट स्टार्ट डिक्लाइनिंग आफ्टर थर्टीन ईयर्स ऑफ एज इट स्टार्ट डिक्लाइनिंग इट इज ऑफ नो यूज सेम थिंग कम्स विद दिजडम टीथ Now, which are these uh, wisdom teeth? If I talk about it in Hindi, we say that aklarad. It is of no use. After those twenty-eight teeth, na the teeth which actually come up, they are actually of no use. So yes, they are also vestigial organ. Organ. In the similar manner, if I talk about this pharynx also, but the main thing is that if I talk about thyroid, it is very very important. We just discussed about it. Iodine. Iodine is very important. From where we get what thyroxine hormone, right? So yes, thyroid is very important, and that's why we will say that. Question was asked, which is not a vestigial organ, and yes, thyroid is not a vestigial organ. It is important one. Okay, next we have a ring-shaped piece of metal is heated. If material expands, the hole will dash. What do you think? Question is, if I talk about a metal, there is a hole within that metal. Now, what we have done, we have actually heated that up. When we are heating this up, so what do you think? What is going to happen? So, question is: A ring-shaped piece of a metal is heated. If metal will expand, what will be the change in hole? Will it contract? Will it expand? Will it remain same? Or it will expand on or contract? This is actually R. It will expand or contract depending upon the width. So, what will be the correct answer? And yes, everyone who is there in the session, everyone is required to please answer this. Waiting for the answer, please. we know about the thermal expansion right whenever we talk about any of the element or any of the metals those metals when they are heated up they are expanding when these metals are expanding this means if this metal is going to expand so obviously what will happen this hole will also expand so here what is the correct answer the question was asked a ring shaped piece of a metal is heated if the material is expanding what will be the change in hole so hole will also expand so what is the correct answer the correct answer will be option number b that is it will expand next we have ratio among the linear expansion coefficient aerial expansion coefficient and volume expansion coefficient is what so we have three of the expansion part that is linear expansion aerial expansion and volume expansion so what is this ratio now this ratio is not only important for this Board part. Some of you, if you are giving examination for SSC GD, some of you might be there who have just passed tenth standard, right? But this question was asked in tenth standard, no doubt. But this is important for the competition part as well. This is asked again and again. And how we are denoting it? We are denoting it by alpha, beta, gamma, right? So yes, question may be asked in any of the form, but you have to remember its ratio is what? Its ratio is actually one is to two is to three. And yes, this is about this expansion part. Okay, let's move forward now. Heat energy received by the Earth from the Sun is due to what? Now this question is from CGL part also, CHSL part also, and a important one. When I'm talking about this heat energy which is received by the Earth from the Sun, it is due to what? Now just think. When we are talking about a sun, now this heat energy is received by Earth. Now what is going to happen if I talk about this heat part along with that UV, uh, UV rays are also coming? And for just checking this UV rays, in order to just check the passage of this UV rays, we have ozone here. So there are several questions which can be discussed here. So let's go with the three sixty degree post mortem here. Yeah, Kiran, awesome, very good. So what is the correct answer here? The correct answer is going to be radiation. But let's understand all the facts that can be asked in the examination. Let's see. From the sun, which rays come? This is the first question which is asked in the examination. So the first question is which ray? It is UV ray. What is that particular part which is protecting Earth from this UV ray? That is your ozone. It's next question. This is second question. Third question is what is its formula? That is O three. Fourth question is. What is this width known as? So this width must be measured by some of the unit. Unit may be meter, it may be kilometer, it may be something. So if I if I will talk about this unit, so Kiran, I want answer from you. Let's see, can you answer this part? This width is measured in which unit? This is the next question. After that, when we are talking about the heat transfer, how many modes are there? So there are three modes of heat transfer. Three modes. First mode is conduction. 
सेकेंड मोड इज कन्वेक्शन एंड थर्ड मोड इज रेडिएशन नाउ इफ आई टॉक अबाउट कंडक्शन वॉट इज हैपनिंग हेयर इन दी कंडक्शन पार्ट द मॉलिक्यूल्स विच आर प्रेजेंट हेयर दे आर एक्चुअली नॉट मूविंग दे आर वाइब्रेटिंग एट द सेम लोकेशन इफ आई टॉक अबाउट कन्वेक्शन the molecules which are present here these molecules will start moving so there is the net movement in the molecules the molecules start moving but if i will talk about this radiation when we talk about this radiation they don't require any sort of medium and here kiran was absolutely correct that radiation don't require any sorry this radiation don't require any medium so yes and there was a question which kiran i asked you kiran is saying sir kilometer maybe no kiran please remember this is asked from the physics part that is if i'll talk about its width it's measured in dobson very very important okay so the width which is measured here that is dobson so everyone who's there in the session please do not forget this or do not forget this dobson part it's not kilometer okay so we have discussed each, each and everything which was necessary here Let's move forward with the next question now. So we have next question here. Next is Felis catus is the scientific name of what? So is it cat, dog, mouse, or porcupine? What is the correct answer over here? Porcupine, mouse, dog, or cat? Felis catus is the scientific name of what? So here one more question I'll be asking. This was the basic question which I have actually asked in the morning. next question will be mine homo sapiens homo sapiens this scientific name is for what and this felis catus is the scientific name of what so very good kiran awesome if i'll talk about this felis catus from this name cat itself i can re remember so there are, there is a trick <coughs> so we have jersa jose over here and that's totally correct what was the correct answer here cat So yes, from this Felis catus, this cat we can remember that, and obviously, if I'll go with this Homo sapiens part, I guess this everyone can tell it is for humans. So Homo sapiens is actually for humans. Okay, <coughs> we have next question now. Next we have so we have example official application where we have, which is one stop solution for the government job aspirants. We have all the things which are important for you, whether it is job alert, whether it is free subject or subject wise topic wise quiz with the report card. or we have current affairs which is daily weekly and monthly the important thing is how you are going to get it just go to play store type example over there click on the install button click on the open part just do the registration and start using it okay so we have another question what is another name for vitamin b2 what is another name for vitamin b2 so is it thymine hemoglobin rib riboflavin or dextrox hello jasha good evening how are you and can you give this answer i'm asking what is another name for vitamin b2 and yes if there's anyone whether it is kiran jarsha anyone who faces this particular difficulty in remembering these names please let me know i have all those tricks if you want i'll just tell you so wherever not only for this bio part for physics for chemistry wherever you feel like it is getting quite difficult we are unable to memorize it we are not able to remember all those facts and figures just let me know i'll just tell you Yeah, so Kiran has given the answer riboflavin, and that's totally correct. We have just discussed about it, right? So yes, if I talk about this thymine, thymine is the name for vitamin B one, and riboflavin is the name for vitamin B two. Talking about hemoglobin, hemoglobin is actually not a vitamin. Hemoglobin is present in our blood, where we know that hemoglobin is the one which is giving red color to the blood. So Jarsa is saying, sir, it would be thymine. No. Uh, just now, let me tell you. I'll write the sequence order for you all. Please do not forget. Here we have for vitamin B one name is thymine. For vitamin B two, we have name riboflavin. Riboflavin. We have B three, that is niacin. We have B five, that is pentothenic acid. We have B six. We have pyridoxine. B seven. Biotin. 
वी है बी नाइन पॉलिक एसिड एंड देन वी है बी ट्वेल्व साइनो को बेला मीन सो दीज आर दी इंपॉर्टेंट नेम्स वे दीज नेम्स आर इंपॉर्टेंट बट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज अच्छा यू टॉक अबाउट बी वन ग्रेट ऑसम सो जर्सा एंड किरण बोथ ऑफ यू आर करेक्ट नाउ सिंस आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट इट रिमेंबर अबाउट बी ट्वेल्व दिस इज मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन फॉर द एग्जामिनेशन दिस क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम यू पी पी एस सी पार्ट रिसेंट इन दी बी पी एस सी एग्जामिनेशन देन अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट वी कैन टॉक अबाउट यू पी एस सी आर ओ ए आर ओ एग्जामिनेशन देन सी जी एल अपार्ट फ्रॉम सी जी एल इट इज ऑल्सो आज इन सी एच एस एल दिस इज रिपीटेडली आज प्लीज रिमेंबर जस्ट हैव अट दिस वर्ड कोबाल कैन यू रिलेटेड कोबाल यू कैन रिलेटेड विद कोबाल्ट प्लीज रिमेंबर this cobalt is actually required for its functioning so yes here cobalt is present it is asked in the examination please remember cobalt so whenever you find cobalt you can go with b12 apart from that if there's lack of vitamin b12 whenever there's a lacking of vitamin b12 it will lead to what it will lead to pernicious pernicious anemia very very important question and favorite question of all the examiners so pernicious anemia occurs if there is lack of vitamin b12 okay let's move forward to the next question now next question we have and everyone who is there in session please like it and share it as much as possible so yes which among us following is not a connective tissue what do you think jarsa kiran what is the correct answer here which of the following which of the following is not a connective tissue is it blood bone skin or cartilage what do you think what would be the correct answer here answer please which of the following is not a connective tissue let's see who is going to win this race in theories it was na life is a race so it's not actually that race but still let's see who can give this answer in the first attempt itself so yes jarsa is the one who has given answer sir d cartilage remember jarsa when we are talking about this part that is connective tissue It's good that you have seen this part. Not otherwise, maximum of the candidates just directly say that blood would be the answer. See, when we talk about this blood, bone, and cartilage, all these are actually your tissues, right? And that to connective tissue. Here, your skin is going to be the correct answer. Where skin is not a connective tissue. Now, if I talk about these tissues, there are four type of tissues, right? It is asked in the examination. Basically, how many types of tissues are there? So remember. there are four type of tissues which are they first of all i can talk about those particular muscular muscular tissue then we have nervous tissue apart from that we have epithelial tissue and then we can talk about connective tissue and when we talk about these tissues connective tissues you can talk about blood bone and cartilage but the important thing is no issues there are no issues this is important when we talk about this blood see it is fluid na it is fluid and it is also connective tissue so what we say whenever we start the chapter of this blood whenever in the book or in the examination wherever we discuss about it the first line that is discussed is blood is a fluid connective tissue right so i guess now you know the reason as well now there are several questions which can be asked from blood part let's discuss about it first question which is asked from the blood part is what is its quantity so on an average we'll talk about it is around 5.5 liter first thing second thing is if i will talk about its nature it is actually slightly basic in nature there must be some ph value what is the ph value of this blood so it is 7.4 then next question is if i'm talking about this blood so we have hemoglobin here now what is its percentage for males we need 14% on an average and for females we need 12% next is according to the body weight this is asked in upsc ro uppsc ro the question is that if i talk about the body's weight how much body's weight weight is actually related with the blood so remember whatever body's weight is there so 7% of the body weight now it's not like that if someone is of uh, of 200 kg so you will compare the blood with that i am talking on an average right for a healthy body so for that 7% of the body's weight exactly tells you about the blood okay so these are the questions which are repeatedly asked from blood part 
So let's move forward with the next question now. So I guess we have done the 360 degree postmortem here. Let's move forward with the next question. Next we have, okay, so there was a discussion which is left from bone part as well. If I talk about bone, bone is made up of what? Bone is made up of calcium and phosphorus, one thing. Second thing is, if I talk about those cells which are present in this bone, they are what? There are osteoblast cells. Osteoblast cells. If someone you ask about you protein, if someone will ask you which protein is present here, please remember that protein is osein protein. So, osein is the protein, osteoblast is the cell. And for the same reason, if someone asks you, Sir, what is the study of this bone? So, study of bone, you can relate with this part itself. What is that? Osteo. So, from osteo, you can remember osteology. So, I have told this. Logy means study. Study of bones. So, all these things we have discussed which are important for the examination. Let's move forward with the next question. Next, we have a body of all complex animals consists of only dash type of tissues. So, how many types of tissues are there? We have just discussed about this issue. How many types of tissues are there? So, we have four options. That is 4,440 and 4. What do you think? Just totally correct. Osteology is the study of bones. True. Now, my question is the body of all complex animals consists of only dash basic type of tissues. So, how many basic type of tissues? And everyone who is there in the session, please, please answer this. Kiran, very good. Awesome. Heads off. I have just discussed. When I talk about these types of tissues, so we have four different types of tissues. Yeah, Jarsa, totally correct. Very good. And which are they? I have just discussed muscular, connective, epithelial, right, and nervous. So we have four different types of tissues. So do not forget, four is the correct answer. Next we have, which among us following does not have a cell wall? So is it euglena, paramecium, gonioclex, or mycoplasma? What is the correct answer over here? A, B, C, D, which is not having a cell wall. So, till the time Kiran and Jarsa are giving the answer, others who are there in the session, please start giving these answers. What I am saying, if I talk about a cell, so outermost part of the cell is cell membrane. Outermost part of the cell is known as cell membrane. But, if I will talk about plants, we have one more layer over here. And this one more layer over here, which is present, is known as cell wall. What is that? That layer is known as cell wall. So, if someone is asking you which of the following is not having a cell wall, this means it must be a, it must not be a plant, right? So, here just try to have a look at the fourth option that is mycoplasma. Mycoplasma is actually a bacteria which is the smallest living cell. Smallest living cell and Jarsa has given the correct answer. Awesome Jarsa, very good. What was that? Mycoplasma. So, it is the smallest living cell, right? Okay. So here, option number D was the correct answer. Let's have a look at the next question. Dash is the largest phylum of animal which includes insects. Here you can talk about bees and all. So what is that part? And when we talk about this largest phylum of animal kingdom, here please remember of this animal, if I'll talk about here in the animal kingdom, here we have more than 750,000 species. Just think about the scenario. So yes, Dash is the largest phylum of animal which includes insects. Is it Annelidia? Is it Chordata? Is it Arthropoda? Or is it Platyhelminthes? Kiran, can you answer this part? No? Okay, I'll tell you the largest kingdom. And yes, this is the most important question. Again, I'll put a star over here. Because it is again and again asked. So here, Arthropoda is going to be the correct answer where we talk about those wings, appendages which are present here. Uh, no, Jarsa, here arthropoda will be the correct answer, right? And yes, please remember, when we talk about those amphibians, amphibians are the ones which can live in water also and land also. And if I talk about some of the plants which are living in water also, land also, so we have amphibians of the plant kingdom. I'll talk about plant part now. Amphibians, amphibians, of the plant kingdom. So, if I talk about the animals of, the, sorry, amphibians of the plant kingdom, this means they are requiring water and land both. So, they are known as, they are actually what? That is bryophytes. Bryophytes is going to be the correct answer over here. Okay. So, here arthropoda was the correct answer. Next, we have 
So we have example official application, which is one stop solution for the government job aspirants. We have live paid courses. We have free subject wise, topic wise quiz with the report card, job alert, admit card, examination date, topic wise free live classes. We have daily, weekly, monthly current affairs. All these at a single platform. Just go to the Play Store, click on the uh, Play Store part where you will just type example there. Click on the install button, click on the open part, just do the registration and start using it. Okay, so what I was talking about, this is the last question of the day and the question is, which of the following is the largest mammal? So is it whale, rhinosaurs, elephants or humans? And for the mammals, we have discussed that mammals are the ones who are directly giving the uh, birth to their younger ones, right? But there was an exception and that, uh, then that, sorry, that exception was what? That exception was Echidna. Remember, I'll write here. That exception was Echidna. We have this, Echidna is actually a mammal, but still it is egg-laying mammal. Okay, so here it is asked, which is the largest mammal? Is it whale, rhinosaur, elephant or human? So very good, Kiran, Jarsa. Awesome. Heads off to both of you. Okay, so both of you are correct over here. And please remember, what is the correct answer? The correct answer is whale. And one more question is derived from this part. This is from the CGL part only, not for CHSL. Question is asked, which of the following mammal gives birth to the heaviest baby? Please remember that would be a whale only. That is blue whale. If I talk about this whale, it is giving birth to the heaviest baby or I can talk about the biggest baby. So their baby is actually the one which is when it takes birth itself, at that time itself, it is in the turns. Okay. So these were the important questions from the CGL part. Tomorrow, we'll meet 12 to 1 for the SSC different, different examinations and for the 4 to 5 session, only for the CGL part. Okay. So bye-bye everyone. Please take care. In case you have any doubt, you have any issue in memorizing any of the fact, just let me know in the comment section in the class so that we can have a discussion on that. For example, if you want the trick for learning all those vitamin series, whatever it is, for biophysics, chemistry, anything. Just let me know. Okay then, I'll meet you all tomorrow at 12 to 1 part where we are going to discuss SSC CGL part, sorry, CHSL examination, STENO and CHSL examination. So CHSL, STENO, CPO, all these examinations will be discussed between 12 to 1. So bye-bye, please take care.